Hi guys, Ashling here. This book uh, was something I had really been looking forward to reading. I had seen photos of it on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook from other authors and uh, booksellers as well and was really excited to finally see it in shops and get my hands on it. So what I've got for you today is Such Small Hands by Andres Barba. And I think you can kind of agree with me straight away in that a title like that, Such Small Hands, already inspires so much curiosity. You've got to know what is that about. It sounds so creepy and so weird, but really gives nothing away as well. You just have to know. And then the, the little doll on the front, you just, you're really, really enticed and you're immediately so curious what it's about. I know I shouldn't really talk about the cover and the title because what's inside is what matters, but we do all sort of judge books by their covers, just a little bit. Now, this book is about a little young orphan girl called Marina. The book starts literally on the first page with both of Marina's parents perishing in a car crash and she is then left to go to an orphanage for young girls with only this doll that she is given by a psychologist for company. And it, from there on out, it just sort of spirals into this really interesting psychological, but also very, very incredibly simple and subtle story. Uh, the doll is very, very important. Marina sort of can't differentiate herself and the doll. She names the doll Marina and she's Marina, so they are both Marina. Uh, the girls as well in the orphanage are very important. The book is told from two different points of view, you know, bits where Marina is talking and bits where the other girls are talking, but they'll all talk in unison. It's sort of like a Greek chorus. They'll be saying, we loved Marina, we hated Marina. It also is incredibly sinister. We sort of forget when we grow up how terrifying childhood was sometimes and all these sort of feelings and thoughts that we were having like how womanish you could be you know, best friends with somebody in the next second you could violently hate them and that really really is uh, carried through very very well in this book I can't believe how well the writer was able to understand and sort of recapture and recall these feelings. Little girls are incredibly complex and exciting creatures, although terrifying. As time goes on in the book, uh, the girls in the orphanage, they develop this strange obsession with Marina. They both hate her and love her at the same time. So what I mean by this is they are looking at her and she's a very beautiful child. You know, they want to comb her hair, they want to touch her, they want to play with her, they want to be her best friend, but they also want to punch her and kick her and spit on her and kill her. So it's, it's really, really strange the dichotomy of things that are going on here. And then uh, later on, as the story progresses, Marina, who is a strangely powerful character for a little girl, which I really, really liked, uh, she comes up with this very, very strange nighttime game that she decides she and the other girls are going to play. She tells them, we are going to play this. This is what's going to happen every night. I won't spoil it for you by telling you what it is, but it really is, you know, quite haunting. This is a book that I have been thinking about long after I finished reading it. I read it last week and I kind of, even I've had it around my house and sort of been staring at it and thinking, wow, it's so stunning. It's hard to even do it justice when you describe it because I feel uh, books about children can sometimes be put into a car category just for children, but this is definitely not the case. It's, it's so intriguing. And the style as well, I think if you've read a lot of books like this, you'll really, really appreciate it. It's so subtle. It's so brief. There's almost no adjectives in the whole thing. It's very, very straightforward, but somehow incredibly complex and philosophical, psychological, all the rest. I really can't recommend it enough. I actually want more people to read it so I can talk to more people about it and find out what people think. From what I understand, it's been doing quite well. It's been received incredibly well so far since its release. And I'm very, very excited to know what other people think about it. Uh, so if you could please let me know in the comments below or whatever. 
uh, you will be a little bit disturbed, I suppose, but there's nothing wrong with that, but you won't be overly disturbed. And when I say disturbed, I mean in a good way, because, you know, what is literature if it can't really affect us? Uh, how I would describe it, uh, maybe comparing it to other authors, maybe a more paired back Shirley Jackson, but it's not really a ghost story. I want to say it's a ghost story without ghosts because I've never been so haunted by a book that had no ghosts in it, if that makes sense. Hopefully you'll understand what I mean by that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I'll be back talking to you again soon with another review. Uh, in the meantime, keep reading and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!